Welcome friends of the greasy shop rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Troy built string trimmer TB25SB. Customer complaint is that it ran good the first day and hasn't run since. Now I know the first thing you're thinking is well they probably put straight gas in it and roached it. And uh, how come you're not looking in the cylinder and looking for scoring? Well, I thought the same thing, and this trimmer was looked at at the front counter. We pulled the spark plug out, and it wasn't scored. So we're looking for spark now. And it turns out we ain't got no spark. So we're going to dig into this one. Now, to get at the ignition module, you, know, you got to take a lot of stuff apart. It's not hanging off the back side like on uh, some other brands. And my goal here is to disconnect the wire on the coil and try it again and eliminate the kill switch circuit. Now you can see there's only two screws holding the uh, shaft assembly on there and three screws holding that red uh, plastic cover on that side. Off comes the throttle cable wire and we're going to remove the throttle cable itself from the red piece of plastic so that we can separate the shaft entirely. There we go. Now be careful because there's still wires connected to the coil. And what I wanted to do here was just unplug the kill switch wire like that and we're just going to push this back on here and give the rope a pull now you see a little bit later in the video there's another way of cranking this thing over without having to recoil on there we'll get to that in the meantime, we're going to remove this drippy fuel tank from this situation. So we've got some form of spark checker on here and still no spark. So we don't think that the kill switch is any part of the problem. So I removed the wires from the back of the switch so I could remove the red plastic clutch cover. And now we're going to crank a drill onto the end of the crankshaft so that we can spin this thing around and do a little bit of testing. You can see that at slow speed we have no spark at all. But if I really crank it up, we got spark. Well, you can't pull the cord that fast to get spark. Our air gap seems to be okay, so we're going to replace the ignition module. Unfortunately, it took a week for the module to get here, so we had to throw the parts into a tote and hang on to them. I find these totes work pretty good. Uh, cardboard boxes are okay, except they tend to crush or get damaged or have holes in the bottom. And you don't always end up with all the hardware you started with, you know what I mean? So here is our official MTD ignition module. I'll pull the old one off. The first screw's got the ground wire on it and really the bulk of the wiring harness. I mean, that's the entire wiring harness for this machine. When you pull the coil off here, um, you know, turn the flywheel so the magnet's right in not right up against the ignition module just a good practice to get into otherwise it gets stuck on there and when you put the new one on you don't want it's you know pulling and up to the flywheel and getting stuck on there so what we'll do is we'll open up the gap and we'll just snug one of the screws down and we'll put our feeler gauge or whatever form of uh, gap gauge you're using. We'll put it in place, swing the magnet so it lines up with the module, 
loosen the screws, let the module snap to the magnet, and tighten the screws down. Uh, afterwards, just take your gauge and double check your work. Now I found on these, for reassembly, it's really much easier to pull that kill switch out of the housing and feed the wires through the hole in the housing and then reattach the switch. Otherwise, you got to dig in there with your needle nose and, and try and snap everything back together. And it can be a, it's doable, but it can be a little frustrating. Me even feeding these wires through here is just a little clumsy. Once we push our wires on the back of the switch, we can just snap the switch into place. Bing, bang, boom, done. Okay, we have this little, um, I don't know, gap filler piece here. Kind of holds that plug wire up into place. And now I'm just identifying which fuel line has the filter on it, which is the return line. And you can tell if you hit the primer bulb, you know, the, the fitting that fuel squirts out of is your return line. So you just put that on the hose, that's the return hose, onto that fitting and it's real quick and easy. This heat shield it ain't much, one screw holding it on, but it does have a couple of clips up near the spark plug that lock into the red plastic piece. Choose your screws wisely. Some of these screws are going into metal and some are going into plastic. I'm gonna leave it up to you to identify which are which when you take it apart. All right, we've got our clutch cowl back in place. And we're gonna put the shaft into the end of the clutch. Now, I removed the, when I pulled the clutch cable out, it popped out of the gear head on the other end. So we're just spinning the gear head right now and getting things to line up while we put a little bit of pressure on that assembly. Sometimes they just pop together, other times, uh, takes a little wiggling but it'll go we'll put our two screws back in that hold the shaft assembly to the clutch cover and then we're gonna snap our throttle cable back into place and it's got some clips uh, for the routing on there so just get it locked into the clips just like that Okay, we're going to prime it up and we're going to see if this thing runs. So that's all I got for you on the Troy Built String Trimmer Ignition Module Swap. Thanks for watching. Later.